ischemic heart diseases, the laboratory diagnostic possibilities. Uh, if we do have any kind of necrosis, any kind of cell injury, that protein which is released out from the cells can be measured in the serum. And if we choose a specific biomarker, that be specific for the injured tissue. The most used cardiospecific enzyme, that's a troponin T. It's not an enzyme, that's a protein. It has about 84% sensitivity for myocardial MI, eight hours after the onset of symptoms. The level of increase after three to six hours peaks at about 20 hours and remains elevated for seven to 10 days. So if we do have an other MI that happening within one week, troponin cannot be used. It can be elevated in unstable angina as well. This is why it's not so specific for MI for necrosis. Abnormal if it exceeds 99% of the healthy people's distribution. May increase after the STEMI to the levels of 20 times higher than the upper reference limit. Advantage, highly sensitive for detecting myocardial MI. Levels may have to reference risk. And you, when you can uh, identify in unstable angina, a disadvantage less specific than troponin I, increase in angina, increase in chronic renal failure and polydermatomyositis as well. Cardiospecific troponin I, as you mentioned before, that's more sensitive and selective for MI than T. Negativity rules out the myocardial infarction. Even a small elevation indicates myocardial damage. Creatinine phosphokinase, it's very similar increases as troponin, three to six hours. However, it returns to the normal after 48, two days or three days. It's not specific for STEMI, may be elevated by trauma, skeletal muscle diseases. This is why we use the isoform that is specific for the heart. This is a MB isoform. MM for the skeletal muscle, BB for the brain, is MB for the heart. Myocarditis, cardiac surgery, electrical cardioversion can also elevate the level of keratinine phosphokinase. Myoglobin is an oxygen binding protein found in the skeletal and the cardiac muscle. Myoglobin is released from the ischemic muscle because the earliest one, earlier than CK, creatinine kinase. The myoglobin level can be elevated within one hour to two hours and stays up to three to 15 hours. Because myoglobin is also present in the skeletal muscle, an elevated myoglobin level is not specific for the diagnosis of the MI. Its diagnostic value is limited LDH. Lactide dehydrogenase is widespread cytosolic enzyme found in the greatest concentration in the heart, skeletal muscle, liver, kidney, and red blood cells. It's no longer used to diagnose acute myocardial infarction. We do have five isoenzymes. LDH1 and LDH2 are predominant in the heart. Its level peaks about three to four days after the injury and remains elevated for more than 10 days, usually for months. These are the time course of biomarkers. The most or the fastest one, myoglobin. After CK and troponin, they have the same peak. However, CK returns after two, three days. Why? Troponin stays for one week. LDH starts to rise later, but it has a steady state level and lasts for months. Cardiac imaging. Abnormalities of the ball motion on two-dimensional echocardiography are almost universally presented, although acute STEMI cannot be distinguished from an old myocardial scar. An echocardiography can identify a left ventricular failure, right ventricular infarction, ventricular aneurysm, pericardial effusion, or left ventricular thrombus. Doppler detection and quantifying the ventricular defect and mitral regurgitation as well. Cardiac imaging, for example, the 
Several radionucleotide imaging techniques is available for evaluating the patient with suspected STEMI. Usually, this radionucleotide uh, is accumulated or concentrated in the necrotized tissue, and that can be seen on the screen. Myocardium eye can be detected acutely with high-resolution cardiac magnetic resonance imaging techniques as well.